I want to show an example of a technique in physics that's really cool called dimensional analysis. It's not essential physics problem solving, but it's a great thing to have in your toolbox for figuring out what the answer to a problem should look like, even if you don't know any of the physics involved in doing it, as long as you know the units involved in all the quantities that are important. The example I'm going to talk about is the example of deep water waves. I want to know when you have waves, you know, sloshing up and down, flowing through the, across the surface of the water in the deep ocean, how fast do those waves move? How fast do they move from one place to another? And uh, it turns out, I don't know any of the physics behind the fluid dynamics to go in there. Well, maybe I studied it once. It's been a lot. I don't want to try to do it. I would, have, I would struggle to figure out the physics of this, but I can get nearly to the answer. This is a classic example of dimensional analysis. So let's think about what might be important. Just like you can brainstorm what quantities could possibly be important for the speed of these deep water waves. Well, the density of water, we know that these waves are controlled by gravity pulling the water back down. If it sloshes up, gravity pulls it back down. So the density of the water tells you how, how much mass there is in a chunk of water. So that might be important. The wavelength of the waves, the distance from one peak to the next, if you have just waves propagating along, how far is it from one to the next, that might be an important quantity in this. So that's, uh, that's something to consider. Maybe the ocean depth is important. How far is it from the surface down to the ocean floor? Maybe the gravitational acceleration. Now, you know, force of gravity near the surface of the Earth is characterized by 9.8 meters per second squared. That's g, little g. So that might be an important quantity. You try to think about other things that could matter, and it's hard. I mean, probably the temperature of the water doesn't matter, at least not maybe the temperature would change the density, but apart from that, uh, on its own, the temperature shouldn't matter. The salinity of the water shouldn't matter in terms of how the waves flow, not, not particularly. Again, it might change the density, but apart from that, I don't care. All those little things, it's hard to think of anything else that could matter. So this seems like a pretty good list to begin with, and... Uh, no, there is one other thing we need to do to simplify our list a little, because it turns out for dimensional analysis, if you ever find that you can find a combination of your interesting quantities that is dimensionless, where the units all cancel out, then dimensional analysis is going to at least partly fail. It won't give you the whole answer. It may give you some useful pieces of the answer, but it won't give you the whole answer. And in this case, the wavelength and the ocean depth are both measured in meters. And so if those are both important, then our answer could always be multiplied by lambda over d, and, it, and that would, wouldn't change the units. So OK, how do we deal with that? Well, here we have to think physically a little bit and think about the fact that if I have some waves flowing along on the surface of the ocean, let's say the peaks are 10 meters apart or 50 meters apart, or something. They're traveling along 50 meters apart. Does the speed of that wave, is it, does it make sense that the speed of that wave would care whether the ocean was one mile deep or two miles deep? Probably not. Probably this, as long as the ocean is much deeper than the size of the waves, as long as the ocean is much deeper, then probably uh, the ocean depth is something we can leave out of our story. So I'm going to cut that out of the story. And so we're left with these quantities, rho for the density, lambda for the wavelength, and g for the gravitational acceleration, and we want to get a speed out of it. Okay, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this dimensional analysis. One of them is intuitive and quick and really annoying if you don't see how to start or if you don't have any insight along the way. The other one is a bit tedious, kind of, kind of brute force, but it will always get there. I'll show you both ways. So the intuitive way, I look at these, I am trying to build meters per second out of these quantities, rho, lambda, and g. And meters per second in my speed uh, has units, meters, units of seconds, but it doesn't have any kilograms in it. So in particular, density has kilograms in it. None of the other, none of the other things that matter, I've got these three quantities, none of them have kilograms except this one, there's nothing to cancel it out. If I have any factor of density in my equation, it can't possibly work. So that's something interesting right there. Density must not be included, because if it were, I'd have extra kilograms around. So let's just look at wavelength and gravitational acceleration. How could I get meters per second out of that? Well, 
one of them, uh, let, let's see, so I, I've got G that has meters per second squared and lambda that has meters. Only one of them has seconds in it, and it's a second squared. So that means I know that V must be proportional to um, the square root of G, because that's going to have units of the square root of meters per second squared, which is the square root of meters over seconds. So already, I know V has to be proportional to the square root of G, because that's the only place with seconds in it, once I knew I could, couldn't have of any of this, really. So, uh, so I've got that. And then this isn't quite it, though, because I've got a square root of meters on the top. Where can I get more meters? I get them from my wavelength. And so what we'll find is that my V has to be proportional, my speed has to be proportional to the square root of lambda times G, because that's going to have units of the square root of meters times meters per second squared, which is just meters per second, and that has units of speed. So V is proportional to lambda times G is my dimensional analysis answer, and it turns out, the people who actually study this tell me, that the true answer is that V is equal to, for deep water waves, it's equal to the square root of lambda times g divided by 2 pi. Lambda times g over 2 pi, and that 1 over 2 pi is approximately uh, 0.4. So this, if I had guessed this formula, I'd be only be off by a factor of basically a half. By, I'd, I'd have basically the right order of magnitude, just off by a factor of a half, if I use this instead of the true answer. Much quicker to do this than to learn all of fluid mechanics and, and how it applies to ocean wave behavior, so that's kind of something. All right, that was the intuitive way. You saw me sort of talking through it. Oh, I, I, there's nothing to cancel kilograms, so I get rid of that. Oh, this is the only place a second, so I take the square root of that. That was the intuitive way. What is the brute force way of doing this? Goes like this. I'm going to set up an equation. I want my speed, v, to equal some unitless constant times density to the i power, I don't know what the power i is, but it's something, times lambda to the j power, wavelength to the j power, again, an unknown, times g to the k power, again, k is an unknown. I want that to be, I want an expression for speed that has, that is of this form. It's a product of these things. You can see my final answer was that, right? Uh, there was i would be zero power, j would be one half, and k would be one half. So that's, this is what we do, we set this up. Now what do I do next? I plug in the units for each one. I take this and I say, okay, v is meters to the first power times seconds to the minus first power, meters per second is v. And just to be clear, I'll say there's also kilograms to the zero power. That's on my left hand side meters per second, and no kilograms. My right-hand side, C is a constant, so it's just one. When, I, when I'm talking about units, I just put in a one or something for the C. I could put in a 3.9 for it instead. It would have the same units, none. So, okay, rho is kilograms per meter cubed. So that is kilograms per meter cubed to the I power times lambda is meters. So that's lambda meters, so I plug in the meters, uh, meters to the j power times g here is meters per second squared to the k power. I've got that expression. And the reason I've written it out that you can see, no matter what the number is for the density, it's going to be some number of kilogram meters cubed to the i, so mathematically these will be the units of the right-hand side when I write it out that way. So what do I do with this? Well, let me, let me collect like terms. So for example, on the right-hand side, if I, if I look at this, meters, I've got, this would be meters cubed to the, uh, to the minus one, because it's in the denominator, and to the i. This is meters to the, oh, let, let, me, let me translate these one by one. I'm not going to do it all at once. This is going to be kilograms to the i times meters to the minus 3i, that's my first term, times meters to the j, 
that's my second term, times meters to the k times seconds to the minus 2k. Minus because it's in the denominator, so it's a negative exponent, and 2 because it's squared. So this is just expanding it out in terms of exponents instead of fractions. And now I collect like terms, as I was saying earlier. This comes out to be meters to the minus 3i plus j plus k times seconds to the minus 2k times kilograms to the i. If you, can, if you look at what I've done, I've just collected up like terms to get to this line. And now the beauty of this is that I can then take all this and I can compare this expression in terms of my unknown powers i, j, and k to this expression, the desired units of speed, meters per second with no kilograms. I just compare those and they have to match. Each individual term has to match. So for example, I know just by comparing them that this power here, minus 3i plus j plus k has to equal 1. I know that this power here, minus 2k, has to equal minus 1. And I know that this power, i, has to equal 0. And already, you can see with this one, it was relatively straightforward to put this together. Uh, i equals 0 already tells me that i equals 0. This one I can solve immediately to say k equals 1 half, bringing that down there. k equals 1 half, just divide both sides by minus 2. And then I can put this and this together up here and get that minus 3 times 0 plus j plus 1 half equals 1. Minus 3 times 0 is 0. So j equals 1 half. Ding, ding, ding. I now know all my unknowns. And so I conclude then that, now what will I do? I conclude then that, coming over with this, v equals some constant times rho to the 0 power times lambda to the 1 half power times g to the 1 half power. And 1 half power is just a square root. Something that's 0 is just 1. This is just a constant times the square root of lambda times g. And there we go. That's the same answer I got before. It's a constant times the square root of lambda times g, and I'm done. That's my whole story. And again, there's that unknown constant, which turns out to be 1 over the square root of 2 pi. But who cares? It's just an unknown constant. That's our story. And uh, that's how dimensional analysis works. There's the intuitive way, which is fast if you can think of it, or there's this brute force way where you just say it's got to be exponents that I don't know and just set like terms equal between the two sides to make a system of equations that you can solve for the exponents. Either way, you get an answer, and, and that green is hard to see over here. I'm sorry about that. The green is a little hard to see, but hopefully you can get to there. That's our answer, and that's dimensional analysis. You can use this in lots of cool, powerful ways to understand a wide range of different systems, and the amazing thing, the miracle, is that that constant C out front, the unknown constant of proportionality in this, is almost always pretty close to 1, like between 10 and a tenth, you know, is most often what you wind up with. You know, it's, 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 it's remarkable how consistently the universe is kind to us that way, that doing dimensional analysis gets you most of the way to the right answer. It's pretty cool. Hope you like it.